Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 26, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. DD came across an interesting trick on Friday and that's essentially a malicious Word document that after the user does execute macros in the Word document displays a message that looks sort of a very Microsoft Office-like Error 19874, you must have Office Professional Edition to read this content. The idea here is to essentially not make the user suspicious that they just open the malicious document, but just give them a reason why the document that they are expecting here is not being displayed. And keeping with the social engineering theme here over the last few years, we have had occasional use of international characters in phishing domains, where, for example, a Russian S is used to emulate an English C. Now, a new Google Chrome extension will warn users if they are visiting a domain that uses these international characters. I tested it and it worked quite well. And now, with Google Chrome, Chrome, it's actually not all that terribly important because typically Google Chrome doesn't display international characters if you have a mix of different languages. In this case, the Punicode version of the domain is displayed, which doesn't look like the domain the scammer is trying to impersonate. Punicode is how these domains are being encoded in DNS and it always starts with XN dash dash. So typically quite obvious that this is a different type of domain. And recently, Facebook has made it possible to download all the data that Facebook collected about you over the years. Now, one researcher looking at the data made a somewhat surprising discovery that this data does not just include sort of Facebook activity, but also, for example, data about SMS messages that he sent from his phone outside of the Facebook app and his call history and contact. List. I think the import of contact lists has uh, long been known and published. I haven't really seen much about the call and SMS metadata that's being imported into Facebook. Apparently, this only happened if you're using the Android version of the Facebook app. I checked my own Facebook data and using the iOS data, I couldn't really see any SMS or call data being included in their data data dump. But well, if you're worried about it or not, it's probably a good idea to get this download from Facebook to see if anything within your timeline or this data has been added, has been retrieved without your explicit consent. And TLS 1.3 took another hurdle towards becoming a full standard by getting the seal of approval from the Internet Engineering Steering Committee. I talked about TLS 1.3 before and OpenSSL now has a beta version that supports TLS 1.3. Browsers have carefully started to roll it out, in particular in beta versions. So far, a problem that came up with TLS 1.3 was that middle boxes really had a hard time with it. Now, middle boxes are, for example, load balancers, proxies, web application firewalls and the like that have to intercept the traffic between a client and a server. Typically, those systems do terminate the TLS connection, analyze the traffic, and then forward the traffic using a new connection to the other party. One issue that, for example, gets in the way here with TLS 1.3 is how downgrades are being performed. Typically, if my browser supports TLS 1.2, it will tell the server, yes, I'm supporting TLS 1.2, but the server may very well reply with a lesser version like TLS 1.0 or 1.1. The way this is done in TLS 1.3 is slightly different. The browser will still say, hey, I'm supporting TLS 1.2, but then an additional option is being added saying, by the way, I'm also supporting TLS 1.3. 
if a middleware box now only supports TLS 1.2, it will of course reply with TLS 1.2. However, it may still forward this entire message to the server. That server that now supports TLS 1.3 sees the option responds with TLS 1.3, which of course the middle box will not understand and the connection will fail. There are a number of additional issues like that with TLS 1.3. So definitely be careful if you're using load balancers, if you're using web application firewalls, test carefully if they support TLS 1.3 before you enable it on your servers. And I'll link to an IETF document that goes over the various problems that exist with TLS 1.3 and these middle boxes. Of course, there's a lot of politics around these standards. And these same middle boxes are often also used to spy on users' traffic, which made this a rather contested a political issue during the definition of the TLS 1.3 standard. At this point, it looks like uh, some of these concerns have uh, not been included in the standards. There were some uh, optional features where the user, for example, could opt in in supporting uh, middle boxes and the like, but it doesn't look like any of this will be included in the standard. Personally, I believe some of these issues can be addressed by middle boxes. It may, however, in some cases, harm the performance of these load balancers and the like. Well, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.